We're here today to discuss the importance of nail grooming and we're going to be using Plume, our fledgling uh, double yellow head that's uh, right now approximately seven months old to help us demonstrate how the different techniques can be used to safely perform this nail grooming procedure. Because Plume was raised at Harry, he was educated with the Early Parrot Education Program. And therefore, uh, all of our birds that go through this program are desensitized to the nail salon shaper, which is a very soft uh, Dremel tool, a uh, rotary tool that's used for human nails. And of course, it was also desensitized to the uh, nail file. And so this makes uh, the nail grooming procedure now a lot less stressful, uh, both for the bird and the handler, because we know that this bird was already used to it. Um, in this day and age, many of the companion parrots that are raised uh, by aviculturists are more and more desensitized to all of these techniques. And so this makes a very big difference to what we used to live with uh, 20 years ago when most of the birds uh, sold for the companion pet market were wild-caught birds. And of course they had no experience or desensitization to any of these techniques. And that's probably why we were forced to use a little bit more draconian uh, tools or clippers uh, that were more invasive because uh, the time spent in the towel to being restrained to, in order to perform these tasks uh, was a lot more stressful and it needed to be done much more quickly. And so we'll be discussing the new tools available to you and also the different techniques and also how we act as a mentor all the time. Uh, once again, this is another primary lesson that we educate our birds with and as all the other primary lessons, caretakers that are mentors for these birds usually uh, spend a lot of time uh, actually uh, getting intrigued with uh, whatever procedure is being done onto themselves. And so this usually uh, piques a, a lot of interest from our young fledglings that are extremely curious. Now let's discuss for a few seconds if your bird was never desensitized to either a uh, rotary tool or a nail file when it was a young fledgling. And you would like to uh, try to encourage him to become more and more familiar with these techniques. Most important, as I mentioned prior, is that the mentor actually gets very interested in doing that on their own nails. And never sharing is always uh, something that I like to say. Uh, sitting on the floor, perhaps, with your bird, playing around with you and getting interested in the action of doing this. Or maybe while you're watching television, uh, after the bird sit beside you and engage in either nail filing or Dremel. Now, of course, I use a lot of facial expressions and a lot of vocal praise, and I like to get excited with things. So if you get really, really excited and concentrated in what you're doing, usually the birds will come close to you and try and investigate further what's going on. Uh, if this is an older bird, there's no uh, difference, really, because older birds have an ability to learn as well. And so this is not something that I would be uh, afraid to attempt with an older bird. And it has been done several times, especially with rehomed birds. Uh, of course, the easiest thing to do in that situation is to have a, f uh, a bird that is always very, very, very comfortable with this technique and uh, engage in uh, nail grooming with this particular bird and then have the other birds look at them. And this can be very powerful as well. Obviously, it would be so simple for us to just do a podcast on nail grooming with our very well desensitized and educated fledgling, but the reality is not always so easy. And so we like to discuss now how to be able to do safe nail grooming uh, if your companion bird is more reluctant, perhaps older, maybe suffering from overweight, or has never been in a towel restraint or desensitized to the softer methods. And prior to discussing these techniques with you, we like to insist that it is always most beneficial for the safety of your bird and yourself that you have a specialized avian veterinarian or technician or avian handler demonstrate these techniques prior to you attempting to do these on your own. I feel very opinionated against anyone who would be recommending that birds should have their nails groomed uh, prior to them having accomplished a lot of confidence, dexterity, and agility, usually which is something that the birds accomplished at their fourth stage of early parrot education, which can probably be approximately eight weeks or nine weeks of age, at least for this Amazon. And so when we uh, regrettably read that birds get their nails or should have their nails groomed when they're in their chick bins and they're not even perching yet, we feel very strongly about that because this regrettably can lead to um, a lot of problems with health because uh, these nails that are groomed at this age can lead to bacterial infections 
because the babies are in chick bins and they're still in contact, unfortunately, sometimes with soil bedding. But more importantly than that, a lot of these birds will develop uh, biting behavior, and this will have nothing to do with aggressivity, but everything to do with the fact that they cannot safely hold on to a perch, or your hand for that matter. Regrettably, usually the human caretaker is the one that can't handle uh, sharp nails, and it is unfortunate if you are insisting uh, that your avian veterinarian or technician perform a uh, drastic nail groom on your bird and blunt the nails so soft that they can never uh, hold on anymore uh, with confidence. And, and this is something that you need to really evaluate for yourself. Is this something that you're willing to jeopardize your bird's health for, uh, psychological health, in order for you to have uh, more comfort when the bird is perching on you? Or is this something that you could learn how to perhaps hold the bird in a different fashion uh, so that the bird's nails are not that picky to your skin. When consulting with your avian groomer, it's important to discuss uh, the degree that you would like to have the nails uh, groomed and also uh, perhaps uh, the number of nails that will be groomed. And so this is something that you have to discuss prior because once it's done, regrettably, the bird and yourself as a caretaker will have to live with the consequences. Uh, if you're using a nail file, of course, on your bird, then the dramatical cut is not really possible, uh, something that would be accomplished with a nail cutter. Uh, if you're using a soft rotary tool such as this one, also, once again, the degree uh, of uh, grooming can be controlled and so uh, quite less invasive if you regrettably cut too short, you would have time to realize that and make uh, a change to that. But this is something that you absolutely need to discuss with a nail groomer because not everybody uh, understands the consequences and depending on your bird's lifestyle and also life stage, as we mentioned prior, it will have a dramatical impact on your bird. Now, the other thing that's important as well is, is usually the nail groomer uh, is going to be also the one performing any type of flight feather grooming on your bird as well. Uh, we definitely don't think those two things should be done on the same particular day. Uh, having uh, your bird have a dramatical or a complete uh, flight feather groom, and at the same time, having to lose the grip and confidence and dexterity that he had in his nails at the same time can be quite devastating to your bird and cause serious health concerns as well and traumas should your bird regrettably fall and not be able to perch with confidence. With all of the accessories uh, manufactured now for optimal care and housing and enrichment for our parrots in our care, um, it's almost impossible for all of these contributors to not be naturally grooming the nails. Therefore, if regrettably uh, your bird is still housed as we used to 25 years ago on wooden dowels that offer no abrasive texture whatsoever, nor any uh, possibility for your birds to uh, have variation in, in size of perching, uh, then of course uh, this would not be contributing any which way to natural grooming. But of course, with the natural perches that we're now uh, using in our cages, maple and apple, as we use at Harry, and of course with different uh, textures such as this foraging box that's cardboard, and sometimes we can actually uh, still find the java wood or the manzanita that still has the bark on it, then these are contributors to your bird's natural grooming process. Of course, if you're using or only offering uh, manzanita or java woods that have already been rid of the natural bark, or only cotton rope perches, such as these one or these ones, then you will have to uh, groom your bird's nails because there's no opportunity for them to do it naturally. Now with that being said, uh, for years on the market we were selling wraps uh, that would go onto the wooden dowel or uh, abrasive ceramic or uh, uh, cement self-grooming perches. Uh, the birds always favor them, especially at night, and this is the last place where we recommend you should be placing these because they are far too abrasive for the bird to be perching on for a long period of time. So these are now, uh, have innovated, and many of them now have better uh, design in them that prevent the birds from getting pododermatite, uh, bumblefoot, underneath the sole of their feet, and so many of them have a smoother texture uh, where the bird's foot pad should be resting, and this still allows for a little bit of the nails to get abrased and, of course, get naturally groomed. But with all of the birds that are being raised, that we mentioned before, that are desensitized and are easier to handle, 
uh, less and less of these products will be available on the market, perhaps in the future, and because there will be a less of a greater demand for them. The other reason why it's very important to have uh, an, an experienced avian handler and, and ideally a veterinarian or technician to be able to do the grooming with you at least is that sometimes we can recognize nutritional deficiencies, especially if the uh, health of the nail is not optimal and it frays while we're cutting it. Uh, this can reveal and require then for a nutritional change or reevaluation. Now the other reason, of course, is, is more dramatical, and this one is uh, if regrettably you try to uh, groom the nails of your bird and they start to bleed. Now if you cut the quick and you cannot safely cauterize, uh, you can definitely cause trauma onto your bird and it can be life-threatening. So if unless you have experience and you've uh, gone through perhaps a first aid course or completely understand the different strategies to be able to cauterize this nail properly, and that will be lasting as well, then I do not recommend that you should uh, in, go into this uh, techniques and, and, and do this on your own. Now let's look at a different uh, assortment of tools that we can use to perform the uh, safe nail grooming on our bird's nails. Now obviously I talk a lot about the Nail Salon Shaper, which is my all-time favorite. Uh, very inexpensive, battery operated, very soft, you can actually have it running on your skin and it causes no injury whatsoever. Uh, I always recommend that caretakers have these as well in their first aid kit because if there's a small bleeding and it's not a, a, something that requires a huge cauterization, uh, we can usually stop the small bleeding on the tip of the nail with this very soft uh, nail salon shaper, which is a rotary tool that also comes with a variety of different uh, grinding stones. And all of them, except of course the metal one, uh, can be used on your bird's nails safely. Now ideally, uh, if you have no choice but to use a power tool that's stronger, such as this rotary device, then it's hard to find the adapters that will allow you to have a stone that is uh, very soft. And so with these hard grinding stones, we have to be extremely careful because just with a slight pressure being applied to the nail, we can go dramatically too far and too fast. And then regrettably, um, it's inevitable. You cannot go back once you've grinded down the nail to that point. And so this will allow you to be able to do a nail grooming that's a, a lot softer and more precise. Not only must we choose the appropriate grinding stone for the nail salon shapers that we're using or the rotary tool, but this is also a consideration when you're choosing a nail file that you'll be using on your bird's nails. Uh, there's different uh, grades of uh, abrasive properties that can be found with different types of nail files, and this should be also uh, chosen specifically for your needs and your bird's uh, nails as well. Um, I like the nail files. I think that any grinding stone should be very personal to each bird that you're using it with. Uh, it's a little bit like sharing a toothbrush. Uh, it's not something that I would go uh, lightly into a nail uh, groomer for birds and uh, not bring my own stone. I would want to buy my own particular stone for my bird's nails and I would like that to be kept in the bird's file or I would be bringing it to and back from the vet clinic just to make sure that we're not uh, cross-contaminating now with other birds that might have potential uh, viruses or any other health concerns. Now, despite the fact that this is probably the lowest invasive tool that you can use onto your bird, we have to consider the amount of time required to actually perform the grooming duties on a particular nail. And so if you are dealing with a bird that has excessively long nails because it has been neglected or perhaps because th that particular toe is handicapped or the bird is obese and not moving around a lot and therefore not naturally grooming their nails. Uh, and if he's fat as well and has an obesity uh, condition that perhaps is also a cardiac condition, uh, that put together uh, can be that the bird is not able to be restrained in a towel for very long. And so this low invasive technique can be quite dramatical. And this is when you would have no choice but to use something that will be much faster. And so the nail cutters can be used. Uh, of course, the, the, the ones that I usually recommend <clears throat> for larger psittacines are the ones that humans would be using on their toenails because those ones are much uh, larger. But of course, 
in this wonderful pet industry now, there is an assortment of products that are available and specially designed for birds. And so once again, you have to choose the nail cutters that are appropriate for the species of bird that you're going to be using them on. Obviously, these would be way too big uh, if you were doing any type of nail grooming onto a canary or a budger agar. But if you were attempting to cut the nails on an Amazon species or a small macaw or a cockatoo, then you would require these larger uh, nail cutters. Obviously, if you're going to be attempting to groom the nails of your birds with uh, any of the clippers, you definitely should always have uh, in close proximity uh, cauterizing uh, tools. It can be used in case you regrettably do cut uh, the quick of the bird's nail. Now, if it's a very, very soft uh, trim and you've only cut the tip of the blood vessel in the bird's nail, then perhaps you can use a rotary tool to just simply apply pressure and not push any further. And if you remain in the same place, then usually this action of the rotary stone will naturally cauterize the bird's nail. Um, if you have uh, none of these tools to your disposition, you can definitely have a close at hand cornstarch. And this is a very uh, safe product to use on a bleeding nail. Uh, regrettably, it will not plug the nail and completely repair it, but it will temporarily stop the bleeding. And this is something that will be important for you to at least be able to achieve uh, if you require to uh, now move on to your veterinarian's clinic to get a proper cauterizing done, perhaps with a silver nitrate stick that will uh, for sure protect now the nail from having any bacteria creeping into it. Uh, using a simple powders such as the cornstarch or the quick stop, uh, like I mentioned before, will stop the bleeding, but it will not permanently repair the nail and prevent any entrance uh, into the bloodstream of your bird because you have an open wound onto the nail. Now you can use a nail file as well and if you're uh, in a situation where you're not panicking of course and the bird is being properly restrained, if you quickly use the nail file onto the tip of a nail that is not extremely damaged then that can also serve as a cauterizing technique. Of course in your first aid arsenal you should always have a tube of green clay such as this one and the reason for that is that green clay can be put onto any wound and especially on the tip of a nail that's bleeding it will temporarily stop the bird's nail from bleeding of course this is until you can get it probably cauterized but it can at least uh, give you uh, that time to actually get professional assistance in order to provide uh, proper cauterization onto the nail demonstrate now how to use the towel in order to facilitate nail grooming for a bird that's not willingly or voluntarily allowing you to do so with the small nail salon shaper or with a nail file. Now I'm using a towel that's three times the size of his body with his wings open and this usually allows me to be able to comfortably wrap him uh, enough turns with the wrap that I have a, a very comfortable, secure towel cradling position for the bird. I like his eyes to be able to see me as well so that when we're doing this I can continue to talk to him which is more important than for me to talk to the camera at this point because this is not normal for him to be wrapped in a towel and so if, if I can at least continue the conversation with him it's going to put him more at ease. Now easily uh, when we're doing any type of towel cradling and we want to be secure, I know, we want to be secure because I'm going to have both hands now uh, with complete attention on the nail grooming, then I will use a uh, Velcro strip and I'm going to position you just a little bit better here because you're now starting to slip in my towel and this is not going to be the best position for us to do any type of grooming. So basically we have to ensure that we have perfect towel wrap and then I will use the Velcro strip to ensure that the towel will remain in this position. So I like to use this strip because it is very uh, well adjusted for Amazons. And you can see on this side, but now I have just one foot exposed here on this side and the other foot is comfortably resting under the towel. So this allows me to be able to take the Dremel tool and work on this bird's nails without any concern that the other foot 
maybe coming to grab my Dremel tool, the rotary tool that I'm using. I know, what's going on? It's okay. It's okay. What you doing? Aww. Now, of course, the preening of the bird while we're doing this really helps as well. And it, because it's not a stressful uh, uh, intervention at this point, uh, we can do it quite rapidly. And since this is still a young juvenile, I'm only going to take out a little bit of the points just to demonstrate for you. And every time I'm doing it on one nail, I'm making sure that my hand is completely uh, taking under control of the other fingers that are exposed. This way I'm also ensuring that the other toes are not grasping onto the nail salon shaper that you see here. And this is really important. Now of course I'm not putting any pressure on the bird because the towel cradling, towel restraint is doing all of that. And so we're not uh, in any risk of applying any pressure to the air sacs that are located right above the hips. And this is usually a very big concern when people are handling birds and restraining them and they're not conscious about their anatomy. Often we will have people put pressure or restrained excessively around these areas where there are important air exchange going on. So this towel wrap is allowing me to do so. Now if this bird was fat, obese, or very, very stressed, and we wanted to be able to accomplish a towel wrapping uh, um, with more, uh, to have less uh, impact on the bird, we would probably be using a wet towel. And if we use a warm, wet towel when it's not an excessively hot day, that can also help and be more comforting to the bird and usually because of the weight of the towel, the bird will be less likely to be struggling. Now, of course, we are using here an Amazon. And Amazons are probably the feistiest to put in a towel wrap uh, compared to a macaw that usually act like a towel, like they're a, a stick insect. And once they're towel wrapped, they don't usually misbehave. They don't usually squiggle around and try to get out. But Amazons are, are quite challenging. And so I, I did not want to use a bird that was easiest just so that you could see that effectively it can be done. Uh, and it can usually be done with a lot more play than what we're doing right now because as I said, if I was focusing on the bird right now, uh, this would be much more pleasurable for him. Now as you can see, I finished now the towel cradling and dremeling of one foot, but I'm keeping the bird in my towel wrap uh, underneath the towel nonetheless, and I'm going to be foraging, maybe offering him a, li a little bit of food in the towel, ideally, so that he cannot associate this experience with a bad one uh, as being in the towel. Um, these birds are... are used to towel restraint when they're fledglings. Of course, once they become juveniles like this bird and now enter the juvenile population with the other birds, we don't practice this very often. So this particular individual now has not been towel wrapped for about six months. And so nonetheless, you can see that his heart raised is not racing. Uh, he's not uh, hyperventilating here. He's not completely stressed out. Uh, he hasn't tried to bite me. This is still something that he has uh, familiarity with and he is not uh, having such a bad exposure to this technique. Now using the Dremel is really really simple of course and the only concern usually is that we make sure that the other foot doesn't come to grasp onto the Dremel tool. Uh, using a nail cutter can be a little bit more tricky of course because we have to be extremely cautious that we're not causing any injury onto the toe. And we have to be extremely cautious that we're not cutting too short either. Uh, for us to be using uh, something as invasive as this cutter on a bird's nail that is without a doubt completely uh, a safe uh, and a normal length would be way too invasive. And so I will show you nonetheless the technique that we use is the same. We use a technique with the towel and I would be extra cautious now that the other foot doesn't come to grasp on, making extra caution as well that my hands are securing all the other toes. Then I would be uh, making sure that I cut the nail on the lateral side and not cut it in the middle as such, front, where the nail could actually split. So you want to make sure that you have a cutter that is big enough for the species that you're working with. And obviously, uh, this would be suitable as well for a large citizen such as an Amazon. But if we were using uh, smaller cutters that are meant for budgerigars or cockatiels, then we could definitely uh, damage the, the nail. Uh, and of course, I would be just cutting the tip of it.
Now always be opportunistic when you're doing any intervention on your bird. He's already towel wrapped, easy for you to put him on the scale to get weight monitoring. He's already towel wrapped, might as well, and you have the foot in your hand, might as well evaluate now and photograph the integrity of the bottom skin of the foot. And so what we're looking for is a perfect foot, as you can see here, with no signs of abrasion on the skin that we would call pododermatite or bumblefoot. And so the ideal thing for you to do is with all your smart devices that you have now, you should be photographing these and putting a date right beside here on a little paper so that you can actually bring this to your avian veterinarian when you go to your next visit and show that you've been monitoring the progression and the health of the foot. Now, when we do intervention on the birds or exams, we want to make really, really sure that we're not seeing any type of uh, onset of pododermatite. So we usually use a little bit of aloe vera or vitamin E gel, and we usually apply this to the sole of the foot. And this is the way that we will be able to reveal now the stage one or the very, very uh, onset of a bumble foot, whether it's in the crevices or where, whether it's in um, the, the palm of the foot or whether it's on only one foot. Okay, we're done. Very good. You're very good. Good bird. So then when we remove the bird from his towel restraint, I'll just try and, and maybe do it on the floor and play with him with a little bit of food hidden under the towel. Don't take him out right away with a big sign of relief and say, phew, it's over. Because the bird might then associate this towel cradling with a really negative experience. And so it should be rewarded with vocal praise. This is a, a good time now to preen a part of his body, perhaps his head or around his ears and just inspect his ears as well to just make sure there's not missing any feathers there and everything is okay. But this is really the time that you should uh, be very opportunistic with to make sure that this towel cradling wasn't a huge negative event. And most birds are so curious. They like to play peekaboo in the towel anyways. So have fun with this and try and make this experience a little bit more fun than it has to be. Now, despite the fact that this uh, juvenile was trained and desensitized to towel restraint because we're filming now in a in a space that he's not familiar with and because of the hot lights. Uh, obviously, uh, this was a little bit uh, long for him to be under the towel restraint, just for such a low invasive uh, nail grooming. And so we have to be very conscious of that and always monitor his, ventil his uh, breathing. And of course, uh, after any kind of intervention, we like to offer water. And we like to do this with the bird so that the bird once again, it's more reassured. What I like to do also is when we have birds in a towel restraint, we always monitor how they're doing as well as looking at their breathing and all the other health signs, but the temperature of their feet. Uh, birds that start to hyperventilate will usually increase, of course, their breathing, but will also have to have feet that uh, start to get warm. And this is the time where you have to take a break. And then whatever is not done is not done. Ideally, you never do all the nails anyways in one a seance of uh, nail grooming. Uh, ideally you want to have one or two nails at least that are a little bit pricky or else you're removing all of the dexterity and the agility and the confidence of this bird. So try and take this approach from now on when you are visiting uh, either your avian groomer or your technician or your veterinarian for a nail grooming and, and, and try and insist also that it's not completely blunt or they're not completely done, right?